Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm your host Pumarama and in today's video we are going to be going over Amani Tech vehicles. Are they worth the price? What is the cheapest way to get and fully upgrade an Amani Tech vehicle? And to finish off, how do they stack up to their other armored variants being vehicles like the Shafter V12 armored and the Duco Death? Let's get into it! Let's first of all talk about the advantages and disadvantages you have when it comes to Amani Tech vehicles. And if I'm going to be completely honest, there really isn't a disadvantage at all apart from price tag when it comes to Amani Tech. For example, this vehicle has semi-bulletproof glass, which is really solid. And the Shafter V12 has semi-bulletproof glass. And the Duco Death is free. The only problem is that it only has bulletproof metal on the one side. The problem is that's the passenger side. If you're the driver, yeah, you can be shot right through when driving the Duco Death. However, I will say, one nice thing about the Duco Death is that you cannot be shot through the back of this car, where these two vehicles here, you can be shot through the back. And I should point out that a minigun will cut straight through glass. No matter what, it will cut right through armored glass. So, uh, while Amani Tech vehicles, and as well, vehicles like the Shafter V12 that do have that bit of extra padding on the glass, it's not going to matter all too much when it comes to cutting through the actual glass if you have out a minigun, where, for example, the Duco Death will never be cut through the back even when using a minigun. However, this is where the big advantages for the Dubachi Champion or any Amani Tech vehicle start to come into play. First of all, this vehicle can survive up to 10 homing missiles, and you can't even get locked on when it comes to homing missiles because this vehicle can run missile lock-on jammers. Essentially, if you're in a vehicle that has any lock-on ability, so, let's say a Sparrow, you can't lock on with homing missiles to an Amani Tech vehicle. That is insanely good. So not only can you survive up to like 10 or 12 missiles, but you can't even be locked on by those missiles. As well, you can drop slick mines, which means anybody trying to chase you, you can just drop down an infinite amount of mines and they'll get stuck way behind and they'll never be able to catch you. Amani Tech vehicles are fast. Vehicles like the Champion, the Virtue, and the Buffalo STX are incredibly maneuverable, and for example, the Buffalo STX can even sit four people, making the Shafter V12 still kind of pointless. As I said, really the only advantage that these two vehicles have is the price tag. Apart from that, there's really no reason why you shouldn't want to own an Amani Tech vehicle. They're incredibly safe, they got bulletproof glass, and the fact that these vehicles can survive so many missiles is just a flat win. At first glance, getting your hands on Amani Tech vehicles looks to be incredibly expensive, and while it's not cheap, it's definitely manageable if you play your cards correctly. For example, to get your hands on the Vehicle Workshop to upgrade Amani Tech vehicles, you need to own an agency. And the cheapest agency, if you take a look at Dynasty 8 Executive, is $2 million at the Little Seal location. That's definitely not cheap. However, if you do it right, you'll wait until there's a 40% off discount. It seems like every month or so, Rockstar on one of their update weeks makes the agencies on sale. And whenever they do that, it's a 40% discount. So that brings what was the $2 million price tag down to about $1.2 million. That's a pretty decent discount. Not only do you need to purchase the building, you also need to purchase the vehicle workshop, which is going to be an additional $800. But once again, if you wait for the 40% off on the building, it also makes all the upgrades 40% off, making it in total 1.6 million to purchase the building and to get the vehicle workshop added in. So, I mean, yeah, it's not cheap, but there's a big advantage. When you purchase the agency, you also get the opportunity to do payphone hits and the opportunity to do contracts and the Dr. Dre VIP contract. Just completing one Dr. Dre VIP contract is going to pay you $1 million. And literally two weeks ago, we had an event where you complete it and you get $2 million. So, yeah, I gotta be honest, the agency is well worth the money, especially if you're planning on using it to make money back out of it. It's just an absolutely fantastic business, especially when you add into the fact it's got free snacks and that it comes with like a 25 car garage. So overall, it's an absolute win. When it comes to upgrading the vehicles and getting your hands on a pretty solid Amani Tech vehicle for cheap, you're actually in luck. And that's because of the vehicle that we're standing right in front of, the 
Ocelot Virtue. In the latest DLC for Grand Theft Auto Online, the Los Santos Drug Wars update, you are able to complete the first and last dose missions after meeting with Dax in Sandy Shores. When you complete these missions, you're not only going to get the Acid Lab, which is the newest business added into the game, you're not only going to net about seven, eight hundred thousand dollars from bonuses and payouts on these missions, but when you finish the final last dose mission, you are going to get this vehicle for absolutely free. The Ocelot Virtue is fast. It goes 120 miles per hour, and it's got some of the fastest acceleration in the game. It is absolutely insane. Not only that, but it looks absolutely amazing. It's based off the Lotus Evia. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but it's an absolutely sick hypercar. But you can upgrade this vehicle with a Monitech, Tech, and that is what makes it absolutely amazing. As you can see, we can put on body armor for the vehicle, we can make our way over to a Monitech, Tech, and we can put a missile lock-on jammer. And that's just about as cool as it gets. Plus, you can put on proximity mines, slick mines. And there you have it. That is all the things that you can do to your Monty Tech vehicle. There's no weapons or anything like that. It looks like we can actually put on it. I have not upgraded mine until now, as you can see. So we can put on armor. We can put on the Monty Tech capabilities of missile lock on jammer. And we can put on slick mines, which is honestly pretty dang sick. I'm not going to lie. I should add, unfortunately, the Ocelot Virtue does not feature bulletproof glass. And we can see that right here. These bullets are going straight through the glass. If we compare that to a vehicle like the Buffalo STX, yeah, you're going to have bulletproof glass, at least for a decent chunk of time that will keep you protected. So that is one downside that the Virtue does not have, but it has everything else that a vehicle like the Buffalo STX carries. And I got to be honest, the Virtue is really, really fast. To show you just how fast the Virtue is, we're going to do a time trial. Well, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know that you could not use Imani Tech vehicles on time trials, but that's all good because I actually own two Ocelot Virtues, and one of them, as you can see, is a normal variant that does not have the Imani Tech upgrades on it. We have to drive three miles and get there in two minutes and 16 seconds. Now, the thing about electric cars, which this is, is they're all about acceleration, and you'll notice that. We're only going about 118 to 120 on average when it comes to this vehicle's top speed. However, this vehicle can always keep that top speed, which is what makes it so dang fast. And now it is an all-wheel drive car, although you're probably not going to notice it's all-wheel drive, because this thing definitely has some slippery suspension and traction. It's a very, very tricky car to handle, especially in corners. You got to make sure that you're keeping that throttle very loose on the corner, or you're going to, you're just going to die. So that's something you got to keep an eye on. You almost saw me there spin out as well, but we're all good. We actually managed to keep it under control, get around that corner there, and this is where the car is just so fast as climbing up hills like this. It is incredibly fast. The braking is also pretty good on this vehicle. Overall, the handling I really can't complain about. Just a couple days ago, I actually tested the Virtue in lap time, and it was able to do a very, very considerable lap time, putting it within the top 20 supers cars, which is not bad at all. It's, as I said, nothing impressive, but it's good enough with acceleration and handling to get the job done. So we got one mile left to go until we've made it to our destination, which is not too bad at all. We're just following the route here, and and I could take the route it wants me to, or I could take my own special route, which is called going a bit off-road. You kind of have to when it comes to this time trial just because of the way it's designed. But now that we've gone off-road, just to cut off that little bit there, we can follow the road for the rest because we don't want to go off. Oh boy, doing this in a supercar is not... Oh, we almost just died there. But doing this in a supercar is not the most optimal thing ever. I normally like to do this in a motorcycle. But even with going off the road here and doing this in a supercar, as you can see, we were still able to complete this time trial. And by the way, with about 20 seconds left, so not too bad at all. Overall, the Ocelot Virtue is an absolutely fantastic vehicle. The fact that you can make it a Monty Tech is even better. And it is by far the cheapest Monty Tech vehicle you'll be able to get your hands on and honestly it's probably the best judging how fast it is as i said you're not able to get bulletproof glass but heck everything else is just as good hopefully you enjoyed today's video i'll see you all in the next one Bye bye